The title of this video is not an exaggeration. There are literally scientists that want exotic pets banned, censored, or strongly discouraged from being seen on a YouTube platform. Now before I get into this, I just want to state that of course the exotic pet trade is imperfect. There are people who care for animals poorly, trades that are illegal, and in some very specific cases, the keeping of certain species is associated with non-sustainable collection practices that harm wild populations. This is not a universal rule for all exotic like animals, nor are the people who are doing things correctly responsible for the actions of criminals and negligent individuals. So now let's get into it. So you might be aware that while many people enjoy keeping so-called exotic pets, not everyone is on board. There are many people who object to keeping certain animals that fall under this definition, and everyone seems to have a differing opinion on which exotic animal is unsuitable for people to own as a pet. However, did you even once begin to think that keeping exotic pets is so deplorable, it should be up there with cruelty to puppies, spreading harmful medical misinformation, and promoting violence? Therefore, it needs to be censored from social media platforms? Five scientists set out to answer the question of whether or not social media may be prompting the public to buy certain animals in their study. Is YouTube promoting the exotic pet trade? Analysis of the global public perception of popular YouTube videos featuring threatened exotic animals. This study actually used emojis and other criteria to try and quantify the perceptions people are having of various videos that feature certain animal species that are being handled freely. Ultimately, the findings of the study reveal a shocking conclusion. People who watch videos of exotic pets often enjoy them. This is evidenced by their leaving positive comments, including expressing the desire to keep the video subjects as pets, such as the popular, I want one, exclamation. While you might be rolling your eyes and thinking, duh, the researchers were very troubled by these results because exotic pets are being normalized on YouTube, and they just simply can't have that. First author and then final year veterinary medicine student at the University of Adelaide, Georgia Maloney, said in an interview, in addition to comments along the lines of, isn't that cute? We found that people also indicated that they wanted to be close to the animal and have a similar interaction of their own. This is of concern because it could indicate that people think these interactions are not only normal and okay, but desirable and could support the exotic pet trade. Heaven forbid someone thinks interacting with an animal is normal. Okay, so first of all, let's take a look at the paper's definition of exotic pet. They claim exotic pets are animals without an extensive history of domestication or life in captivity that are not traditionally viewed as companion animals. I have noted numerous times on this channel that many exotic pets do in fact meet the criteria to be considered a domesticated group and they most certainly do have an extensive history of life in captivity. So the authors are essentially relying on what people consider to be traditional companion animals, which is a useless and non-meaningful way to categorize animals when it comes to the appropriate of keeping them as pets. These authors are just engaging in a logical fallacy called appeal to the majority and subsequently proclaiming without evidence that every animal that falls under this category is illegitimate. They also describe any free handling interaction between humans and animals as unnatural. It may be argued that portraying exotic animals in free handling situations, as seen in more than 90% of all videos, alludes to the supposed domestication of such animals and consequently endorses exotic pets. Folks, this is why I talk so much about domestication on this channel, and it is a dogmatic concept that is completely misunderstood, even by people who shouldn't be making these mistakes. This is a huge issue I am having with this so-called scientific paper. Nowhere do they provide an explanation for the degradation of every exotic pet owner. To combat this baseless accusation, these authors actually propose to essentially ban YouTube videos that show exotic animals being handled by humans. Alternatively, it is recommended YouTube employ software to automatically detect key terms such as species names within video titles or descriptions 
subscriptions and flag them for immediate review in association with revised YouTube policy guidelines prohibiting videos displaying interactions between humans and exotic wildlife. Reviewed videos in violation of newly established policies should be promptly removed to discourage normalization of these exotic animals as pets. Is that unbelievable or what? So here you have a solid example of people in the scientific community literally trying to censor exotic pet owners, which can also affect their livelihoods, as some people do make money with their videos here on YouTube. And they state this so matter-of-factly, like, it's just something that makes perfect sense and is not contestable or contemptible. They are so sure that what they are suggesting isn't a massive overreach. They demand YouTube adhere to what amounts essentially to their opinions. As YouTube itself plays a crucial role in enabling and encouraging public access to this content, they must also accept social responsibility for creating a culture wherein human engagement with threatened exotic wildlife has become acceptable. They also propose the introduction of artificial intelligence that will identify certain animals and display some propaganda to users that will hopefully discourage them from watching the video. And lo and behold, not all of the species they assessed are even significantly harmed by the exotic pet trade or there is insufficient evidence, even if they are threatened in the wild by other causes. Some examples include tigers, lemurs, and caracals. Some of these animals are kept as pets in their native region, which the keeping of captive bred animals in other countries does not impact. They ultimately conclude, in response, implementation of targeted YouTube policies, provision of information for users on animal welfare issues, and conservation status as well as accurate content regulation is highly encouraged to cease the illusion of the normalization of threatened exotic animals as pets and prevent false legitimization of the exotic pet trade. The wording of this paper is truly shocking. Frankly, there is so much content allowed on YouTube, and some of it is quite heinous. YouTube is not that strict on what it will allow, so it amazes me that the authors see exotic pet ownership as such a profoundly terrible thing that they'd ask YouTube to prioritize regulating our content over the much more pressing issues YouTube is dealing with. Or maybe they just are extremely naive. Regardless, the exotic pet trade is a massive network, not just one entity. Not all species fall under the umbrella of negatively affecting their wild counterparts by existing. A large portion of exotic mammals are captive bred domestically. There have been, of course, various species that are affected more than others. For instance, one of the animals assessed in the paper was the slow loris, famous for that viral tickling video. This is a species that you only see being kept in some Asian countries, especially the countries where the species originates. A case can be made for animals that have little to no successful captive breeding to display such information about their likely wild-caught status, which pressures a species that is compromised in the wild. Cheetahs and even gorillas are a problem in Middle Eastern countries, especially the United Arab Emirates, where celebrities and monarchs pose with animals from dubious sources, yet these animals have practically zero presence in the United States, Canada, the UK, etc. The point being, why demonize all exotic pet owners in every nation? Instead of targeting people for putting their animals on YouTube, promote good practices when choosing where to source animals, and if a certain species is proven to be significantly harmed by the pet trade, we can raise awareness about this. No one needs to be pushing unfair double standards on pet owners who happen not to have dogs and cats.